Hi everyone. So today we'll discuss about the quick sort. Now, quick sort is what is quick sort? First thing that will come to your mind is what is quick sort? Quick sort is nothing but one of the most famous sorting algorithm technique. So what are the important sorting algorithm technique? So for the interview purpose, merge sort, quick sort, heap sort are the most important one. So if you haven't much watched the video of the merge sort, please check out my merge sort video. Click on the i button and you will get it. So why you need to check the merge sort first of all? Because quick sort and merge sort, they are kind of two most important algorithm which will take uh, the time complexity as O of n log n. Now the question which is coming to your mind is, hey, which one is uh, more important? Which one will take less time? When to use which one? So these are the few questions which are coming to your mind, I'm sure. So I'll talk about the merge sort. Merge sort in the worst case that will take off n log n time. But the quick sort in worst case that will take the time as O of n square. That is the difference between these two. And the algorithm wise, they will have slight difference in the approach we follow the things. So please check out that video first. And if you will come here, those things will be very easy for you to understand. So let's jump to the algorithm, how it works. So I will here uh, try to explain you this approach as compared to the merge sort. So you will be able to relate the things that where we have the difference, when to use which one. So you can see in the left side we have merge sort, in the right side you have quick sort. So in the merge sort what we will do, we will define one function called merge sort which will take let's say parameter as array, starting index and end index of the array. Now similar to that we will create one function for the quick sort which will take the array start index and index till now there is no difference now let's move to the first step in the merge sort there you will do the mid element which is nothing but the start plus end divide by 2 but in case of uh, quick sort instead of mid element what we do is we will get the pivot index so for pivot for getting the pivot index we will write one partition algorithm so what this algorithm will do is it will place the last element or the first element based on the pivot it will move that pivot element to the pivot index so that such that all the elements in the left side of pivot index are smaller than the element at pivot index and all the elements which are greater than the pivot index are greater than the element at pivot index. So in merge sort we have half up, okay. But in case of quick sort we are not sure that will be middle element or not, okay. That is the one difference. Now the approach for this partition I will explain you in some time. No worries. Now let's jump to the second step. So here we'll get the middle element. Now we will call the left half. How? Aries and start and mid. Then we'll call the right half mid plus one to end. So similar to these two steps in the quick sort also we will call the same function but instead of middle element we will call it as the pivot index minus one and the right side will be pivot index plus one. So I hope this way you will understand the things in the better way. Now in case of merge sort there is one extra step which is very important and that is how to merge the sorted array because if you will not merge them your array will not be sorted so that is the difference but in case of quick sort we will not do this step instead of that where we are doing the sorting logic you will say the logic will be present in the partition method so let's quickly jump to the partition how we do that so I have taken one example here you can see let's say we have an array okay 10 5 15 4 40 30 35 here start is nothing but 0 and is nothing but 6 now what we do in the partition method in the partition method 
what I will do is we will so let's check out the what text I have written here so we will place the last element to the right position such that all the elements on the left side of it are smaller than the pivot element and all the elements in the right side of pivot are greater than the pivot element that thing I already explained to you so you will say hey how to get the pivot index so logic to get the pivot index is what I will do first of all let's say pivot is the last element so pivot is nothing but 35 okay now i will take one index called pivot index that will be starting from the start so till this point we are clear okay now we will just run a loop on the array and what we will do we will check the element at the index i i is nothing but the loop counter okay so compare the element at i with the pivot element if that is smaller than the pivot just swap the two indexes listen carefully we will swap the two index i and the pivot index so what is the role of pivot index here pivot index is nothing but the index which will make sure that hey till this point all the element on my left side are smaller than the pivot so this will make sure that thing okay so okay i have done the iteration here you can check out first of all pivot index is nothing but zero i is also zero we will run the loop for i so if array of i which is zero array of zero is less than pivot which is 35 yes true what we will do we will swap the i and the pivot index so swap the i i and pivot which is 0 and 0 nothing will change in the array and the pivot index you need to increment whenever you are doing the swapping you need to increment the pivot index else do not increment it now this is the array we got when i was 0 nothing got changed in this one let's move to the i1 so array of 1 is 5 less than 35 swap array 1 and 1 nothing will change increment the pivot which is 2 now now let's move to the i2 i2 you will compare 35 swap 2 and 2 pivot will be increment that will be 3 let's move to 3 so same pivot will be 4 now now when i was 4 area of 4 is 40 which is not smaller than 35 so it is false okay we will not do the swap operation and this time pivot will be at 4 only now i became 5 pivot it is still at 4 array of 5 which is 30 smaller than 35 yes swap the pivot which is 4 and the i which is 5 so you will see this is the difference after the swapping 30 and 40 okay now we reach to the last of the array and pivot is now 5 because we have done the swap operation so we will increment it and the pivot is now 5 so what in the once you will come after the loop what you need to do you need to do the last swap operation between the pivot index and the end of the array so pivot is 5 end of the array is 6 so swap between 40 and 35 so pivot is 5 now and you can see we'll just return pivot from here now what is this logic doing here you can see one very important thing here is all the elements on the left side of 35 are smaller than the 35 and all the elements which are greater than the 35 all the elements on the right side of 35 are greater than 35 so this is the first iteration now what we will do we will call the same method with this left one okay and we'll call the same with the right one so we have divided the array in two half so we will not say half here we have divided the array uh, based on the pivot index okay so now i hope it is clear to you let's directly jump to the coding part okay we will try to write down the code so i have taken one array okay and this is the array we will just call the we will write the method called quick sort 
here we will pass the array start and end okay you will say hey what are the start and end? no worries let me define start is nothing but the first index of the array end is nothing but the last index of the array which is n minus one I need to define this quick sort that's why you can see there is one error coming because quick sort is not yet defined so this is the quick sort all right this is our my method declaration method signature okay first condition will be your if you start is greater than end just return because this is not the valid case return the minus one if you have just one element that means that no need to do anything because that is the one element which is already sorted just return as the same index okay perfect oh sorry here i need to ha, no need to return uh this is the quick sort so we are not we will not return any value yeah sorry this is not required we can do that because see nothing is there just one element just written from here okay now if that is not the case what i will do is i need to get the pivot index how we get the pivot index by calling the partition method i will define the partition in some time all right we got the pivot index now i need to call the same quick sort for the left side of the pivot and the for the right side of the pivot this is the left side similarly i will call for the right side which is nothing but the start and sorry pivot index plus one and it will be end all right this is done now let's quickly jump to the partition method in the partition we'll return integer which is index so partition is nothing but the one array in the start and int end all right similar to that i will write if start is greater than end just return minus one because not a valid use case if they are same no need to do the partition just return the same index okay if this is not the case i will take the pivot element as the last element all right here instead of last you can decide there are multiple things actually you can say i will take the pivot as random element you can take no issues you can take the pivot as the first element so anything is fine but the approach will be similar to that so i'm taking the pivot as the last element so last element okay now i will take one pivot index so pivot index is nothing but the will start from start okay now i will just run one loop so i will be i start to i less than end i plus plus what you will do if your current element is less than the pivot element we will do the swap with the we will do the swap with the pivot index so this is the array temp array of i will be nothing but the array at pivot index cool and array of pivot index that will be trapped. this is simplest sweep uh, swap algorithm whenever we are doing the swap we have seen in the dry run that we need to increment the pivot index as well so once we are out of the loop the last swap we need to do is um, between end and the pivot index so let me just take the same example okay here only difference i instead of i it will be end okay and we know that the we just need to return the pivot index i hope it is clear to you guys okay so this is partition logic 
here we have written the quick sort logic and uh, let's try to run it so we have this is the array let's see the output what will be the output so we are getting 2 4 5 10 15 20 29 40 40 okay so we have two times 40 here okay now if you let me change it to 400 let me change it to 200 let me change it to 50 so we'll run it one more time you can see 2 4 10 15 29 40 50 200 400 all right cool so i think everything is uh, here everything is clear okay so if what about time complexity now since i think already we have taken a lot of time in this video i will upload one more video for the time complexity of the quick sort so please check out that video because without time complexity if you will understand the problem in the interview you will not have that much confidence because every interviewer will ask you hey how much time it will take so i will i can tell you tell you the time complexity here it will be n log n in the worst case it will be n square but i will explain you how to derive that in my merge sort video I, I i hope you have seen that i have derived the time complexity by writing one recurrence relation how to do that so i would say please check out next video for the time complexity in this video if you have any doubt anything which is not clear please comment out so that i can cover in the next video thank you so much everyone if you like my video content please like share subscribe it will give me a huge motivation